Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Um, another day, another task, or let's say another month, uh, maybe different clothes. Hi, Carsten. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, we didn't have the time for over a month to do another video. You were very busy. I was very busy. But finally, we, after we enabling did. our storage basis direct um, layer, uh, we can now continue with what do we do in this video? Bernard? Yeah, this it's this called... one is called Housekeeping 2. Uh, not a very fancy name, I agree. But the stuff that we do is pretty important. We are registering our Azure Stick HCI against an Azure subscription. Um, and we'll tell you why we need to do this. Um, and Carsten is the master of ceremony here. So he I, will... or, I already <laughs> clicked on uh, the cluster. Uh, so we, we get yep. some time because it will take really mm -hmm. I know, roughly I think more than 10 minutes. So yep. and we will talk about why we have to do that when it's running. Right, mm -hmm. uh, Bernard? So yeah. uh, here you see our cluster is now fully aware of an HCI, uh, that, mm -hmm. it is, that it is an HCI cluster. You see here drives and volumes, uh, and we didn't have that before, right, Bernard? Yeah, um, so the, the cluster yeah. was not storage spaces enabled, therefore it didn't know to present volumes and drives. Exactly. Um, now it does. Um, and Windows Admin Center picked it up automatically, but it might be that it doesn't do that. So what would you tell people that uh, where this is the case, where they yeah. have uh, installed in storage spaces direct, but Windows Admin Center doesn't show? What would you tell them? Yeah. For us, it was a long time before the cluster, mm. we reused the cluster. So usually it takes it up, but normally you don't take days between these different mm -hmm. installation points. So for me, it usually helped if it was not picking it up on itself, you can remove the cluster again from Windows mm -hmm. Admin Center and uh, add it again. But sometimes that even didn't help so i had to restart windows admin center without okay. the cluster uh, registered and okay. then that usually did the trick yeah okay. so now we go to the azure stack hci registration what are mm -hmm. you showing yeah i try to you know get my finger where it is okay <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you very much uh bernard so um we have two points here. We have the Azure Stack HCI registration. This is required. Otherwise, we can't use um, VMs in the cluster. Mm -hmm. And we have an ARC enablement of the cluster and the servers. This is, uh, this is not required in the moment, but it's strongly advised. So if you want to mm -hmm. use some benefits, we talk later in the extended part of this series. Uh, um, there are some great benefits you can use when your cluster is ARC enabled. Mm -hmm. yeah. We will do both here. Usually, it, uh, if you do it here, it will do both uh, yep. because it's a, it's a little bit hidden. So okay. let's just go here and we have to choose a subscription. Mm -hmm. Then um, the registration part that is has to run in Azure is not mm -hmm. available in every Azure data center or in every Azure region. There are multiple. So you see here we have two, four, six, eight, roughly eight. And I choose, of course, West Europe because mm -hmm. we are from Europe. That's the nearest data center. You could also register it in India or wherever you like, but I prefer to do it in West that, Europe. And that, that view might change, right? So because this yeah. is only at this point in time, we are adding functionality to the data centers you know, over the time. So yeah. you know, when you so hit is, the button, it might be yeah. looking a little bit different. Yeah, okay. same with Windows Admin Center. Uh, yep. We have now uh, May of 2023. 20, if you watch this video, maybe in 24, mm. it already everything is has changed, maybe. Yeah? Okay. So it's only um, in the moment it looks like this. So now we can create a resource group for our Azure Stack HCI cluster, mm -hmm. a new one, or we use on an existing one and you maybe mm -hmm. re remember we created our cloud witness our storage mm -hmm. account and i want okay. to use the same the same resource group uh, makes it's sense to RG the... and then the cluster okay so now I, I click on register and it starts or not so sometimes there is um, a, mm -hmm. a, a 
question for uh, CRED SSP uh, login or enablement. Sometimes it, it asks for login to a cluster node. Maybe that will come later. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is your Windows Admin Center has to be registered in Azure. As uh, mm -hmm. So we did that before, or it is registered. But if, if it's not, you have to do that. Mm -hmm. So I use an account with local administrator rights. Yeah, yeah and it, you know, it, it happens, you know, that because the registration is performing some actions on the individual nodes, right? For example, the ARC enablement that um, Carsten said is a piece of software that is going to be downloaded onto every node in that cluster. And hence, um, I would assume that it requires the permission to do so. Right, exactly. So we need uh, we need local administrator rights on uh -huh. the, on the nodes. Uh, so why do we have to register it? And it, it seems it's very fast today. At <laughs> least the Azure registration, maybe not the Arc registration. So, but Bernard, why do we yeah. have to do that? Yeah, I think you mentioned it already. Um, a not registered HCI cluster won't be able to run any virtual machines, or at least. Yeah. A failover cluster managed uh, virtual machine. So you would not be able to put on uh, a virtual machine into uh, into HCI, right? It would tell you, well, mm, no, I, I'm not allowed sort of, right? So yeah. don't do that um, because the error message might be a little bit misleading um, unless you have registered it, 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 uh, it then should work. Yeah. Right? Uh, Microsoft, if you compare it to Windows Server, Windows Server mm -hmm. is usually bought by a customer and you, you, you buy your version and then you have the right to use it uh, uh, with VMs and so on. Azure Stack HCI is not, you, you don't buy it, it's a subscription model. So like in mm -hmm. Azure, if you use a resource, you pay for the usage and it's the same with Azure Stack HCI. Yeah. So you have to register it. That Microsoft can bill you. If you yeah. don't register it, you can't run resources here. Yeah? And so the that's... server will report back, right? So it will talk to Azure, to the outside world, and it will talk uh, and report its usage, so if it's up or not, right? Um, and therefore, because Azure needs to talk to the server itself, or at least, you know, to know how much money um, should be put on your Azure bill, right? Because mm -hmm. if you shut down a cluster, it won't report back no costs will incur right but you know if it is up and running and performing work then it will uh report back its usage right mm -hmm. so i think we had it says the registration ran mm -hmm. but i guess it's not really because nothing changed here so i will do it again yeah um, let's go yeah yeah try it do again you want One, to go here no. to arc we can also go to azure arc and here we have mm -hmm. also the registration and it says yeah. it's not registered right so we will try it again yeah i mean there are most of the times different ways of performing this right um that would be one of my ways of how I prefer it. Sometimes, to be honest, the UI is a little bit, yeah, um, maybe misleading. Also, it, I would not encourage you to move while it's doing the registration to move to a different tab or, you know, to browse around because mm -hmm. that might stop, you know, the whole operation and Windows Admin Center might not be uh, able to pick it up. So, yeah, so now how, be patient, how do we proceed? take a coffee. Yes. So How do we, wait a, we wanted to talk about the settings a bit. So I open well, a new window. Um, yes, uh, open a new window, right? So um, that's always a, a good thing to do. Um, yeah. And while the other one is performing its work, we can talk a little bit about the settings that we have, right? Yeah, okay. because we call this video housekeeping. There's mm -hmm. a little bit more than Azure registration. Ah. Yeah, let's uh, let, let, leave it like this. It's okay. Yeah, uh, I, I, I leave it like this. Okay, yeah. we don't see anything here. So maybe you have you you look a little bit on the notification if some, mm -hmm. something changes here. Yeah. Okay. How we can proceed? So we have a lot of settings in an Azure Stack HCI cluster, and uh, mm -hmm. we go we go through some of them. I will not right. talk about everyone because this is not a training, a deep dive into Azure Stack HCI. It's it's basically um, an mm -hmm. installation serious right yep so first one is in memory cache and you see here there is an in memory cache configured you can mm -hmm. 
uh, deselect this and we have one gigabyte per node is dedicated for the in-memory cache. So mm -hmm. what, what does it do? Uh, usually in uh, you, with uh, Azure Stack HCI, you have cluster shared volumes where our VMs are uh, yeah. are stored and uh, where, where they write and read the data from. Mm -hmm. And um, Microsoft provides a way for a cluster shared volume to have a read cache on the Hyper-V nodes. And uh, so instead of reading everything from uh, the CSV cluster shared volume, if the block was read before, there is my, maybe a chance that it's in the cache. So it's faster mm -hmm. to read from memory than from devices. Um, this is maybe not so important if you have an all NVMe cluster, but if you have HDDs involved and uh, you mm. read the data from the H HDDs, they are much yeah. slower than NVMe. So maybe if you have a lot of RAM memory, mm. You can you can give it 10 gigabyte, 20 gigabyte, 30 gigabyte, depending on the size of your RAM, and it will speed up the read process. There will no data be written to the to the read cache. It's only mm -hmm. a read cache. Yeah. Yeah. And do you even have performance counters if you want to see and fine tune for yeah. effectiveness? You could you know see the numbers of how much is being served from that cache, right? In yeah. order to fine tune. But okay, yeah. next. But one. be aware, yeah. it's all it's always enabled. You can disable mm -hmm. it, and one gigabyte of your memory per hypervisor is already. Are taken for it. So and we uh, might, you, we, hmm. yeah, yeah. But if you let let me add something, and then you, uh, if you do it in nested virtualization, because you want to hmm. play around with Azure Stack HCI, it's possible. But then you don't have humongous VMs usually. So uh, remember, there's already something taken. Bernard. Hmm. Yeah, um, and re remember, we might need to untick or we might want to untick this setting when we do our performance testings later on, because, you know, these one would sort of play a little bit with the results um, yes. and to see the raw results, we might, you know, yeah. uh, temporarily but, uh, disable this. Bernard, we will discuss that. I prefer yeah. not to tweak the cluster. I I test the cluster as it is because okay. you use yeah. these settings, uh, but I know what you mean. We will yeah, okay. It. So the next thing is storage spaces and pools. And you remember we talked a bit if you uh, create your, uh, your cluster from a 2019 host, I did this uh, uh, on accident, uh, the cluster uh, pool even in Azure Stack HCI, is not Windows Server 2022, it's Windows mm. Server 2019. You remember mm. we did that in a video before. Mm -hmm. So if you did that wrong and uh, have already workload in it and you, you you just got aware of it, you can change here. If there would be a Windows Server 2019 here, you can change it here to 2022 and it will upgrade the pool and then you get additional features like we have here we have mm -hmm. with uh, windows server 2022 storage pool we get the uh, uh, value, uh, we get the possibility to have fixed volumes and also mm -hmm. thin volumes yeah mm -hmm. so but let's here look at some of these things always add new drives this is on yes and it should be because if you put new you add devices to your servers. Imagine there are still some slots free and you need more storage. So you add some devices there. It, they will automatically add it to the pool. Yeah? Mm -hmm. There are some rare cases where you don't want that, but usually you want that. So don't mess with this setting. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Another one, always retire failed drives. So if a drive retires or, uh, or if, if, if a drive fails, you want it to retire. Only if a drive retires, the repair processes kicks in, kick right. in. So if you put this on no, hmm, no you, repair process, re, right? So no repair <laughs> process. If a drive, Even if so you have, be, a, yeah, 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 be very careful with these two, two here. Yeah. So you have really there must be really a reason to change this. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So then we have our storage bus layer. You see uh, the cache state. If you have mm -hmm. uh, caching devices uh, in front of capacity devices, you can turn them off. So everything will be flushed down. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, then the cache mode, if you have different uh, types of, so if you have HDDs okay. with cache, 
usually the cash is used as read write if you have cash in front of ssd so flash cash in front of flash usually the cash is only mm -hmm. used for writes because the reads are fast enough then you see the cache page size is it's 16 kilobytes the metadata reserve we can't change this as is good mm. um and disable write cache if last node is no uh, there you can also in a two node scenario you can also play with this but i mm. would advise advise you don't go here to storage spaces and pools and change mm. something unless you yeah. are pretty sure you have to do that Want to add yeah, something? but it's uh, no, it's uh, it it's reminds me on there are articles on you know what happens or how the storage and the caching functionality of that server would look like depending on which kind of hardware you put in HDDs, mm. SSDs, NVMEs, or combinations of those, right? And that's you know sort of the default values here, which as you just described, for good reasons are how they are, and you should not do them unless you really know what you're doing yeah okay um, our registration is through good is but we, through? okay mm -hmm. yeah but we go on with our uh, with some settings right mm -hmm. so okay. uh, registration work we, we will look at that a little bit later so mm -hmm. properties cluster right. properties here you see some information you can't change it but you can copy them out the cluster name okay. the cluster id domain yada 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 yad. and okay. not so important Okay, then we have an additional uh, possibility. Mm -hmm. I usually don't play with this because if you shut down a node, mm -hmm. should the should the virtual machines moved off the uh, node? So imagine someone mm -hmm. don't really know a cluster and he just types uh, on the on the on the console or in Windows Admin Center, shut down the node. Mm -hmm. So you want the virtual machines usually to move to another node because mm -hmm. the virtual machines are the important things that we really care about yeah there is our workload our applications the cluster is only something yep. we need to run those if you turn this off it will save maybe the virtual mm -hmm. machines but they, it will not move them to another node so usually you want that yeah. Uh, yep. So don't play with it. Cluster traffic encryption. It's moved to another tab. It's in here in security. Mm -hmm. uh, where well, we have it here. We mm -hmm. will look at that later. Mm -hmm. Virtual machine load balancer. Mm -hmm. um, since Windows Server 2016, Hyper-V, a Hyper-V cluster, and Azure Stack HCI is a kind of Hyper-V cluster, has a load balancer. Before that, you could only load balance your virtual machines with a virtual machine manager. But now mm -hmm. with 2016, we have one, and it's by default enabled yeah, with these settings. So the load balancer is responsible to, if you have uh, one host is very heavily uh, used, yeah, and one node for example, is just joining the cluster because it was rebooted. So if there are no VMs on it, yep. maybe you want that the cluster move some VMs from the heavily used uh, host to the host where nothing is on. Would be maybe nice, right? So mm -hmm. the load balancer is always there and he has two uh, different possibilities. Balance, virtual machines, always. What are the other things? Never. Mm -hmm. So turn mm -hmm. off the load balancer. Mm -hmm load balance if a node joins so if a node a cluster node joins to the cluster so he was not mm -hmm. in the cluster he was turned off he is rebooted mm -hmm. he maybe had a blue screen whatever if mm -hmm. he joins the cluster starts the, the cluster service that's that's usually a good point to look if there's something we can something yep. move on it right because mm -hmm. there's nothing there Yep. And always means do it when the server joins and every half an hour. So with always, your cluster looks uh -huh. if there is something to move if a server joins and every half an hour. So every half an hour, he looks, is there uh, some kind of disalignment, uh -huh. let's say. Uh -huh. So now we have, I, I like this word, aggressiveness. Yeah. Uh, so how aggressive does the cluster move the VMs around? So it's on low, very low. It's, it's really not aggressive. It's, it's, it's calm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we can go to high, medium, mm -hmm. or low. What does it mean? High means if a, if a node has 80% or more load, 
then we move something off of it. Medium means 70% or more, and low means if we have a difference of 5% between nodes, then it moves something around. So, no, no, it's the other way around. Low it's means the other 80% way and above, yeah. medium 70% and above, <clears throat> and high means 5% difference. So, if so you, high would mean or that after after one load balancing run through you would have more or less equal workload yeah it doesn't around. it doesn't move all that is mm. uh, so if you have a, a node on 60 percent and another node on 30 percent it will not move everything around it only does a little bit and okay. after half an hour it does again a little bit and again uh, but okay. if you choose yeah. these settings you can't you can be sure that roughly every half an hour a vm is moving around yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your your cluster is very balanced but you have live migrations every half an hour so yeah. these okay. are the defaults right so i discuss the, the changes so witness we have already set yeah? yep. here we should uh, see our cloud witness and our storage account mm -hmm. then we have affinity rules these are important if we have um, vms that we don't want to run on the same nodes so for mm -hmm. example if you were if you would have two sql uh, server instances of a highly available sql server you don't mm -hmm. want them to run on the same node because if mm -hmm. the node has a blue screen or a hardware defect both sql instances will be would be gone yeah? so it mm -hmm. would be wise to say don't put these two sql vms on the same node so that would be an anti affinity rule mm -hmm. there's also the other way around you could say oh i want two VMs running on the same node because my, let's say my SharePoint, uh, my SharePoint system is, has multiple VMs and it, it doesn't matter if one of those VMs is not running, my SharePoint is not running. So why mm -hmm. not do them on the same node? Then the internal network connect, uh, communication between, let's say, the yeah. front end server and the database is on the same node. So it's very fast. We don't go mm -hmm. through, over the network. So yep. there are multiple thing, uh, affinities or anti-affinities you, you can mm -hmm. use. You create a rule. We can do that later. Or even if you're... ID controllers are in the same cluster. Not a good thing with HCI, but if you do that, you maybe want to use anti-affinity mm -hmm. rules so yeah. that the, the, the domain controllers are not on the same node. Yeah? Okay. So let should we go on with more settings? Uh, Is there anything anything worth mentioning or you know really important? Yeah, with, for this? Yeah. yeah, with general. So he, we have some Hyper-V mm. settings and we will not go through the Azure Stack HCI settings. We, okay. we do that in the advanced part. Mm -hmm. So yeah. here, Hyper-V settings, um, uh, we set our, uh, with PowerShell, we set uh, the paths for our VMs, the standard paths, we set to CVMs. Right. And uh, mm -hmm. that's usually not a good place in the cluster. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. the VMs should be on a high available storage. So we can set it here later mm -hmm. if we have high available storage, we don't have them yet. Mm -hmm. And then we can uh, choose uh, CSV and uh, by default, the VMs would be placed there if we don't uh, choose yeah. something else. Got it. And we have here a hypervisor scheduler type. Um, mm -hmm. um, uh, the core scheduler is a more secure one. Uh, there's also the classic one, uh, go with the core scheduler. Then mm -hmm. we have the enhanced session mode. Uh, uh, this is something it's, for administrators, it's very handy because you get an uh, RDP session uh, over mm. your VM connection and you have clipboard and you can connect local drives and so on and printers. <laughs> all, also copy, very paste. Nice. Yeah. copy paste. Copy Sometimes. paste is yeah. important thing. Yeah. But be aware there is a security risk if you choose yep. it because not only you can access the virtual machine from your host and the drives of, you can also access the drives of your machine where you are working from. So mm -hmm. uh, you have to accept this, you have to configure this, it's not by default, right? Mm -hmm. So NUMA spanning, don't mess with NUMA spanning, that's okay. Live migration is maybe something you want to change. So here, mm -hmm. um, 
the cluster always change it back to one. I want to have, let's say, 10 live migrations for later. Oh, you can yeah. do five, you can do two, you can do whatever. And we already said this, we use uh, for the live migration authentication protocol is uh, CRED SSB. And mm -hmm. we want to use SMB because we have some nice SMB networks and we can leverage RDMA. So mm -hmm. why not use it for the live migration? It is memory to memory. So we want to do mm -hmm. that. Yeah, and use any network, let SMB decide which networks to choose. And okay. the last one we have here would be storage migration. If you move around your VM data, um, you can also uh, say how many of those uh, are allowed in parallel per node. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not per cluster, it's per node. And also the live migration is per node. So okay. these are our settings. One thing we forgot is the security. Mm -hmm. This is also very important. So we go to security. We have two tabs here, secured core. If your hardware is, is capable of that, and that's only if you have really new processors, you can do that. Mm -hmm. It's a security feature. But we want to look at the cluster security. And this is mainly the cluster traffic encryption. And we have two types here. We have the core traffic and we mm -hmm. have the storage traffic. So the core traffic is usually signed clear text, not clear text, it's signed. And we can also choose to encrypt our cluster mm -hmm. core traffic. And then we have the storage traffic. The storage traffic is clear text. And now the question is, Microsoft is a company that is for, for Microsoft security is very important. Why is our storage traffic on clear text? Bernard, do you know? Yeah, I think you mentioned it last time, right? So, which is RDMA is the thing. If you exactly. really want to have that high performance network, RDMA yeah. is the thing to do, but it won't work with uh, yeah. encryption. Yeah, the problem is signing and encryption is done by the CPU. And the huge advantage mm -hmm. of RDMA, we, we talked about that, we don't go through the kernel, through the CPU. The, the network card can grab the data from the memory directly. So if you have some group policies, and I see that at some customer uh, installations, it's not bad to sign mm -hmm. your SMB traffic. It's a good thing, or even encrypted, but if you have a GPU, GPO, sorry, and it's, uh, um, and it's how you call that. Uh, mandatory. Mandatory. Yeah, it's, if, it's, if it's mandatory yeah. and yeah. your hosts get them, so all your SMB3 traffic is encrypted, you can't use RDMA anymore. Yeah. Okay, that's that's it. That's a fast, very fast the settings. Uh, um, and now our cluster is registered, right? No, this is the wrong. Yeah, it was uh, it was reporting back. So if you look look on the bell symbol on the right, you we yeah. should be able to get it if you go to uh, yeah. There is the bell, yeah, and we have the the Azure Stack AGI registration is done. Right. You see here, and we also have the Arc enabled servers. So we so, are cool. gold. Yeah, we, we are good to go, but. How about do you have your Azure subscription up and running by chance? To I have a look. To uh, have a look because some things happen at the Azure side as well, right? So uh, while well, Carsten is looking for his Azure subscription, and um, because there is, for example, you could see um, under the uh, Azure Arc um, umbrella or the Azure Arc dashboard, you could see now the cluster showing up. And you should also see a different, a different view, for example. So if you go yeah. to your Azure uh, subscription, yeah, go to this. Azure Arc, yeah, go to your cluster. This. These are also and... signs for Arc enabled, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can also go to Azure Arc. Right, under Azure Stack HCI, it is a little bit below. Yeah, there you go. And here, here's one thing that is interesting. You see the green, the green checkbox that said um, Azure Connection, um, because your Azure Stack HCI is reporting back to Azure. Um, mm -hmm. So if you shut down, for example, your hosts because you want to save money, I do that with my test environment. Sometimes it only shows up with a red warning, not connected within three days, mm -hmm. and then you either wait you know, some hours or uh, for the scheduled task to run, or you do a uh, PowerShell session like sync minus Azure Stack HCI and wait a couple of seconds and then it should go up in green. Mm -hmm. However, so the green, you, yeah, yeah, that's the, where, this one. Where's the green one? 
you mean? The, 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 yeah, uh, the, the screen before. The screen before, yeah. So uh, yes, one. on this on this one, yeah. So this is this is the green, right, with the PowerShell command. However, yeah. the second greens, right. So if you go into the cluster and look for the status of the individual nodes, go for the nodes. This green comes from the Azure Arc connected machine agent. Mm -hmm. So the piece of software that is being installed on every node. Hence, you get a green on every node, right? Um, and this guy also talks back to Azure because this one is sort of being used for also remote controlling, right? So you could, for example, use that in order to apply Azure policies to your individual nodes, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and Azure Arc, we will talk about Azure Arc and mm -hmm. all the nice things you can do with it, or at least some yeah. nice things you can do with it uh, in the extended video uh, part. Right. But first, let's do our installation. So mm -hmm. far, everything is nice, and uh, we want an Arc-enabled cluster because many of the things that you see here are It's a hybrid product, Arc. right? Yeah, it's a hybrid it product and you need to have some sort of a bridge to your on-premise world and the arc agent for example is doing that right um, okay so, uh, but i think we're we done for this one or do you yeah, have and we we will we will install some uh, some volumes next and do some benchmarking so see you in that videos see ya